Happy 4th of July 2021. It was almost three years ago to the day that I bought this Milwaukee M18 cordless chainsaw. And I've done a couple of pretty big projects with this saw. And I'm going to share some of the wear and tear issues and some of the other things that I've learned about the design of it. And I'm gonna compare it with the steel MS-180C along the way. So first thing is the sprocket. I just replaced the sprocket. There's a brand new sprocket in there. So this sprocket is three years of wear and tear. Now, one year, at least one year, probably more, this chainsaw just sat, didn't, wasn't used. And that's one nice thing about electric is if you're like me and you're a homeowner and the chainsaw sits a lot, uh, electric is, is nice that way. So you can see a lot of wear and tear in there. You can see some pretty big grooves. You can even see where there's two, you know, there's two different, you know, you've got an inner groove and an outer groove, which makes you think, oh man, there were some derailments. Yes, there were some derailments. And I thought this sprocket was the reason, uh, and it wasn't. So I used this sprocket uh, for the entire three years that I've had the saw. But, okay, I mentioned derailments. So I was getting some issues with derailments, and it was because of this bar. This bar is bent. And I didn't think it was bent, but after I replaced it, the derailment issues went away, pretty much went away. So I started to think about why did this get bent as I was using the saw with the new bar in it. And I noticed some things that I hadn't been paying attention to. So if this, if this is a tree, okay, you take this, you go against the saw bucks, and then you bring this back until it hits the body of the saw. That's it. That's not much of an angle, okay? Whereas on the steel, you put this on here, you hit the saw bucks, okay? You can see you have a much greater angle here before you run into obstructions on the saw. Okay, so big deal. Well, what that what happens then is, is that when you're cutting into a tree and you're at a bit of an angle and, it's, and the tree is hitting against this and the saw is pulling itself into the tree, it's pulling itself in and it's bending this bar out this way, okay? Because this, this motor is very torquey. So it's pulling that chain in really torquey on this thing. It really is. In fact, I think, I think this has more torque than the steel. I can't prove that. I probably shouldn't have even said that, but that's just what I think. Is electric is very torquey. All right, so that's the issue is, is that there's such a shallow angle here that if you're hitting here, especially if you're hitting out here on the handle like this, so the saw wants to pull in toward the branch and it wants to bend that bar out. Okay, so that's, that's a tendency because of the design you have to be aware of to avoid that issue. So the other issue is this bar. This bar you can see is all flanged out and you know, we all know how that happens. Uh, the chain was too tight. Okay, but how did the chain get too tight? I'm not just going on the tensioner and wrenching it down. That's not what's happening. So what happens is the bar is up like this. Then I, chen then I tension out the slack, tighten these bolts up. I go out and I make an undercut that pushes the bar down and it pulls that chain into the bar really hard and again because of the torquiness of the motor it just rips that bar to pieces it just rips it up bends it up pulls that chain right through there and that's that's how that happens so with these oregon style bars that fasten with these two nuts you gotta you gotta be aware of this sloppiness on these 
and you got to kind of average out the tension, right? So you got to have tension here, tension there, then tighten it up. And, and I really, I, ha I knew about that. I had the same issue with my old uh, Echo Kreutz that I bought from my dad that, that is, is about as old as I am. And I'm not going to say how old that is. Anyway, so those, those were some of the main issues with the wear and tear. Um, the batteries, I'm going to talk about the battery issues at the end. Uh, these are six chains. These were chains that were used just during the, the 36 ash tree removal project. So six chains, these are six chains that I consider to be dull, that I dulled uh, cutting the ash trees. So those are the wear and tear issues. Uh, let's talk about the batteries. Okay, before I talk about the batteries, I wanna talk about two other points of comparison with the steel MS-180C. And uh, the steel MS-180C is about 11 and a third, maybe 11 and a half, I suppose, top off all the tanks with oil and gas. Let's say it's 12 pounds. This Milwaukee is heavier when it's got a battery in it, is heavier about two pounds. Okay, you think, oh, that isn't any big deal. Well, it, it is noticeable. It's not a trivial difference the Milwaukee is actually a little heavier. Okay, another point of comparison I wanna make is the length of the bar from the ends of the saw bucks, right? So from the tip of the saw buck out to the end of the bar. On the steel, so this is listed as a 16 inch saw, but from the tip of the saw bucks right here to the end of the bar is 14 inches. And then from the tip of the saw box back to the center line of the sprocket is five inches. On the Milwaukee, it's also sold as a 16 inch chainsaw from the tip of the saw box out to the, out to the tip of the saw, you get 14 and three quarters inches. And then from the saw, tips of the saw box to the center line of the sprocket is about four and a half inches a little bit more on the Milwaukee than on the steel MS-180C. If you leave out the saw box and you go against the chassis, I'm 15 inches from the chassis to the tip on the steel and from the chassis to the tip on the Milwaukee is 15 inches. Okay, so that's one additional point of comparison. Now the issues with the steel going up and down, it has some issues, but you can see that when I lift this, the steel, when I lift the bar, it's not taking all of this slack out. So the, so the tension that you put on the chain is a more true tension, regardless of where the bar is in its, in its sloppiness, if that makes any sense, hopefully I. Explain that, oh yeah, and this toolless, not having to use a tool to set the tension and change the ch chain on it is pretty nice. So on this one, I haven't had any issues with any of these internal components, the tightener, uh, the, the mounting, none of that. I didn't have any issues with any of that. Okay, now that I've made those comparisons, let's talk about the batteries and the battery life and the overheating issues and all of that stuff. Okay, the batteries. So three years ago when I made my first video about this saw, I had one HD 12 amp hour battery and I had five nine volt batteries, but there were three nine, volt bat nine amp hour batteries that I used in the saw along with it. HD 12 amp hour battery. All of those batteries in that video, I'll link to it in the description below so that you can watch it if you want to, they all overheated. And by overheated, I mean that the lights, all four lights flicker in kind of a alternating pattern. A battery would not take a charge and it would not run any tool. Since that video was made three years ago, 
the battery that I used that overheated in that video was replaced under warranty. I had noticed some odd behavior with it, taking it on and off the charger, putting it in different tools, the reading on the bars, uh, the char state of charge reading wasn't right. I would put it in the charger, it would immediately change to full charge when it said it was half charge, off of the charger, all of that. So I called Milwaukee, I started to explain the issue. They just wanted to know my name and my address and they sent me a new one. It was an, it was a easy warranty experience with Milwaukee on that. The three nine amp hour batteries that overheated in that video three years ago, I think, but I don't know for sure, are the same three batteries that have since been replaced under warranty also. If that's true, and I don't know if it is or not, that the three batteries that overheated in that video three years ago are the same three batteries that eventually failed and were replaced under warranty, that would imply or create suspicion that this tool is a battery killer. If you put a battery in this and you push the battery too hard in this tool in certain circumstances, is this a tool, is this tool a battery killer? I don't know. I, I don't know, but I have my suspicions about that. So the way that I used this tool in this last round of ash tree cleanup that I had to do, I did not use any nine amp hour batteries. I only used these two 12 amp hour batteries and the supercharger that charges one of these batteries in one hour. These were the only batteries I used in this and, and, and I didn't have any overheating issues at all. Now, overheating issues. How come you didn't have any overheating issues? Well, one of the factors is because it was between 20 below zero Fahrenheit and about 10 above Fahrenheit in ambient temperature. Whereas the video I made three years ago, it was 70 some degrees outside. I never experienced any issues with the batteries freezing because they never froze. Because I'm not a professional tree care person that uses these tools all day and these sit in a cold truck all day. That's not my situation. So I have a heated garage. I go out with a fully charged 12 amp hour battery. It's zero degrees out or colder. I do some work. Either my fingers get cold or my toes get cold or the battery dies and I come back in. Everything warms up and goes back on the charger. Okay, so that's why I did not see any issues with the lithium batteries losing performance in 20 degrees below Fahrenheit because they were generating their own heat, keeping themselves warm while I was using the saw. And I, did, I just didn't notice any, any loss of capacity even at 20 below Fahrenheit because I was going in and out of a heated building. Not, I do not have any experience with these batteries sitting out overnight in a truck 20 below zero. So I, I can't comment on that at all. All I can say is, is that I didn't notice any issues with the workflow that I had and I'm telling you what that workflow was. So I didn't have any overheat issues at winter temperatures. I have not used this saw this spring or summer. I have not used it since the winter project. So I don't know if there remains to be any kind of an overheating issue. I just don't know. Now, the, you can see that two of these batteries are older and three of these are newer. So these three newer ones that have the different label, these are the warranty replacements. These are the original style that I have. I just wanted to point that out so that you know why these have different labels on them. So one more comparison that I wanted to make is that when these chainsaws sit, and for a homeowner like me that's not a professional tree care person, these tools sit a long time. It, it takes a little bit of effort to get this started after this sits for a year, but it's not bad. 
it, it really has been a really good saw. I really can't complain about it. It hasn't been too bad with any kind of carburetor gum up or anything like that. I haven't had those issues. Um, and this one does not leak bar oil when it sits. This one leaks bar oil wherever I set it, if there's any bar oil in it or not. It's a slow leak, but it leaks. This one doesn't do that. This is a really nitpicky issue of comparison, but this sheath is thin and flimsy and it gets caught on the chain and it's cut up and it's got holes in it. This one has probably seen just as much action and it's better designed. It pinches the blade here. It's got lots of room for the, for the chain up here. This one has got no problems at all. So Milwaukee, when you do Gen 2, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to do a little more redesigning even on that. When you are buying chains for the Milwaukee, you can go to Home Depot and you can get this Oregon chain. The R56 Advanced Cut. It doesn't say that it works on Milwaukee. It has different other compatible brands listed here. But this does work with Milwaukee. And actually, now that I am staring at the back of this package, I can see that on the back of the package, it does actually have Milwaukee 2727-21 chainsaw listed on the back. Okay, so it's right here. I just, I just now noticed that, that it's on here. They don't put it here, but they do put it here. So these chains work with the Milwaukee. And, and they're, they're easily accessible. Okay, so that's my three year review of the Milwaukee M18 chainsaw. You know, I like having both of these. It would be nice to have a chainsaw that had a longer blade. You know, my old, my old Echo Kreutz had a 24 inch bar I had for that one. But that one, uh, the coil pack went out in it. I couldn't get parts for it anymore, and that one is, that one is gone. But uh, for a homeowner, this thing is so convenient to just pop a battery in here, go out and make a couple of cuts, uh, instead of having to get this thing all gassed up, lubed up, fired up, yank, 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 and get it going. You know, there, there is a huge convenience factor with this saw, but, you know, having both of these saws is a, a definitely a good combo. So buy both. <laughs> so, if you, so if you have to buy one, I, I don't know what to tell you. you. You'll have to make up your own mind. If you can buy both, buy both of them. Anyway. All right. So have a good 4th of July, everybody. And uh, thank you for watching.